Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to welcome you all this early morning on day three of uh, the Polish Control Conference. Uh, the word early is uh, very appropriate uh, in the light of uh, yesterday's long and successful banquet. Um, uh, I'm Dariusz Uciński from the University of Zielona Góra. It's a great honor for me to chair the last uh, plenary session, um, the more so uh, that the topic is so exciting and fascinating. Uh, sens wireless sensor networks uh, were expected to revolutionize uh, not only industry, but our life. Automatic control is not, no exception. And I think that in Poland, there is no better person to give you an overview of this very active research area than uh, Professor Ewa niewiadomska uh, She is an expert in um, uh, modeling, simulation, control and optimization of complex systems, cybersecurity, um, decision-making systems. Uh, since graduating, she's with the Faculty of Electronics and Information Technology of the Warsaw University of Te Technology, uh, she, where she uh, got her PhD and habilitation in automatic control and robotics. Now she's head of the complex system group there. Uh, in the year 2017, uh, she was awarded the title of uh, full professor, which is uh, the highest academic degree in Poland. Uh, for 14 years, she was uh, the director for research uh, at uh, the National Research Institute, NASC, uh, which is uh, the main uh, institute uh, res responsible for developing of uh, communication information uh, networks in Poland. I'm especially, mm, uh, I'm es especially impressed by the number of uh, national in international research projects uh, in which she was uh, involved. As far as I know, there are more than 50 which is very impressive. And this includes uh, European projects uh, within the fifth and seventh framework programs and uh, uh, Horizon 2020. Uh, last year, uh, Polish scientific publishers uh, published her book on uh, wireless sensor networks in um, uh, the Internet of Things. It was published uh, with uh, uh, her research group um, so I think it will be a good complement to this uh, plenary talk. Uh, I hope you'll find uh, this uh, plenary talk, uh, talk very interesting. So Eva, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, my friend, uh, for very kind in introduction. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers of the uh, conference for inviting me to give this uh, plenary lecture. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to in my today's talk, I would like to present selected research uh, given by me and my colleagues, my PhD students, currently doctors, uh, Michał Marx, Andrzej Sikora, and Mateusz Krzysztoń, uh, and my uh, strong group of undergraduate uh, students. Uh, so for uh, the chance Few, few times minutes, we will focus on networks um, comprised of small size, smart, uh, often mobile, often cheap uh, devices capable to collect data and uh, communicate uh, in autonomous way. Uh, these uh, devices can be randomly deployed uh, in the workspace uh, just for monitoring and controlling purposes. Uh, or move in a workspace, uh, ex exchange data, communicate each other in a collaborative way, and uh, to, to achieve a common goal. Uh, the models, uh, algorithms, and uh, protocols I will present uh, can be applied to the systems composed of uh, static, uh, quasi-static, or mobile devices. But uh, what is characteristic uh, in this system uh, is uh, that the nodes can operate autonomously, can organize themselves with a network uh, which cooperate uh, and uh, these uh, 
networks uh, doesn't uh, relay to another external uh, communication infrastructure. Uh, this, uh, the communication between nodes beyond the um, communication range is uh, given by using uh, the relay nodes. So the messages are sent by sent, uh, are sent by hope by hope in a network, in a world. Um, uh, wireless uh, sensor networks and general wireless uh, ad hoc networks uh, are examples of uh, um, Internet of Things uh, systems. So uh, now they are in a constant uh, development. But uh, the key issue is that uh, the communication is a wireless communication. Hence, uh, uh, the events which, tri which triggered the development of these systems were concerned with uh, development of wireless communication and wireless networks. Uh, in 1971, uh, the project the Aloha Net, uh, uh, conducted by uh, the um, uh, University of Hawaii, uh, developed the first uh, wireless network which connected the seven computers uh, located on four islands. And it was the trigger which started from, from this point, they started the development of wireless systems started to, and they started to be popular. The other dates, uh, which were a few days, uh, were uh, the moment when the um, wireless communication standards were published. Uh, the term wireless sensor network uh, first uh, was used uh, by Mr. Bolt and Peter Group in the conference paper. And uh, in uh, 2011, in the MIT report, um, there was um, information that probably wireless sensor network would be, will be the 10th technology, one of the 10 most important technologies which uh, change the world. Main, uh, main, main, maybe not wireless sensor network exactly, but Internet of Things uh, really change our world. The potential application of uh, wireless sensor networks are, of course, surrounding monitoring, uh, exploration of unmanned uh, space, uh, disaster management, like, for example, this uh, uh, wireless network system um, uh, distributed in, uh, around the Fukushima uh, nuclear plant after explosion and uh, measuring the level of contamination. Uh, E-health, e e uh, e-agriculture, e-logistic, and many, many others. Uh, the uh, wireless sensor network has a lot of uh, advantages. The most important is uh, this self-organization. Uh, however, sorry, <laughs> however, uh, uh, we have a lot of limitations in the systems too. Uh, the limitation is concerned uh, with uh, specially limited resources. Uh, each uh, network consists of numerous of uh, devices equipped with uh, central processing unit, of course, memory, uh, radio transceiver, and sensing circuits. And all these uh, modules should be small, cheap, so the resources are limited. Uh, limited resources of energy, uh, limited computational power, limited memory, and limited communication throughput. Uh, hence, uh, the uh, developer of this, uh, the designer of such type of network, uh, has uh, have to solve a lot of challenging problems. Uh, my group and me, we tackled and we focused on uh, several of them. Uh, we were mainly, we put our attention mainly on the algorithm for localization of uh, nodes with a node position. It is one of the problems. The second one is optimal deployment of, uh, of, uh, um, uh, of, of, of the node of the network. The second problem which uh, we were interested in was to develop and uh, check different uh, techniques, uh, algorithms for energy management in such type of network. And the last was concerned with the mobility and the assumption that uh, the nodes can move in a workspace. We were looking for uh, an algorithm for calculating the trajectory of nodes, for nodes, uh, which will be adequate to the self-organizing systems. 
And, but uh, the modeling of the network was the basis for our research. So let's start from these models. Uh, as I have told, the uh, wireless sensor network is, a compri is, uh, is uh, created by a set of, big set of, large set of devices. Uh, devices which communicate each other via wireless, um, via radio, radio uh, links. And uh, it is natural to uh, model such systems as an undirected graph uh, with um, vertices uh, sensing devices and uh, ages um, actually currently available uh, radio links. Uh, we can, uh, in our research, we uh, define the position of uh, each node as a position, as a location of its antenna. And uh, we can model the workspace as a set of points, possible locations of our network nodes. And of course, we assumed that uh, uh, we have uh, static and mobile obstacles in this workspace. Uh, in our model, we decided to, because uh, the nodes and obstacles uh, can have different, can, can be different shape, uh, so, and they are um, rigid solid, so we decided to uh, describe them uh, and describe this, in, in inscribe this, uh, uh, these objects uh, in polyhedron. And uh, the polyhedron is uh, defined by uh, the points which are um, its uh, vertices. And uh, we have to, we, 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 as, I had, as I have told, very important um, component, very important uh, characteristic of this network is uh, limited energy. So the energy state is, um, uh, should be modeled. And we proposed uh, that the formulation, the transition function for evolution of the energy state, taking into account the characteristic that radio module uh, of different vendors can operate in several modes, starting from the active, transition, receiving, and sleeping mode. So we can control this module, its operation. And of course, which each, um, each, uh, each mode is, uh, uh, with each mode uh, we have a uh, uh, adequate uh, energy consumption and uh, a respected uh, range of transmission. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, sensing circuits, we assumed that it can operate only in two modes, active and switched off. So we formulated uh, the uh, transition function for evolution of the energy state, uh, taking into account this radio, uh, these sensors, and of course, uh, not linear battery uh, discharge uh, in a time. And uh, the last equation is a transition function for the memory, which is important in this uh, type of systems, the, buff the buffers, uh, which, um, va uh, which change every time because it, it depends, of course, on the number of data, me of measurements uh, that should be uh, collected. And uh, we have to model the wireless channel, of course, because we have a wi wireless communication. <clears throat> In literature, we can find a lot of models, uh, less and more accurate, that model the radio wave propagation. And uh, very popular and commonly used are uh, simple, statistical, and uh, probabilistic-based models, empirical models. And uh, the most popular models in the case of large scale, uh, large scale networks in a wide area uh, are um, models which describe the path loss, which is a deterioration of the system, of, um, of an um, energy deterioration of the uh, um, of of signal uh, with a distance. And the most popular models are long distance path model and long normal shadowing models. Uh, as you see, uh, the differences between these models are concerned with the assumption about disruption of the signal. In the first model, which is ideali idealistic, we assume that the um, strength of the signals is the same in all directions, so we have a sphere around our uh, radio model. 
In case of the second model, um, the researcher tried to model the disruption, the, the, the inter interference, reflection, and many other, um, e other phenomena which change and um, disturb our signal. And uh, taking into account this model, we can, from this model, we can derive the formula for um, calculate, which can be used to calculate internode uh, internode uh, distance, uh, which is usually used by many algorithms. In these models, we have um, uh, we have parameter n. Uh, it is experimentally tuned parameter, which is devoted and is characteristic to different type of space. Um, sit, uh, uh, middle, uh, field, uh, forest, uh, different parameters for different type of the space. And uh, of course, we assume that our nodes can move, uh, so they can move uh, in uh, uh, adequate speed, uh, which uh, uh, depends, of course, on the uh, device. So they can um, they can be equipped uh, with uh, um, with the uh, um, moving platform, uh, and they uh, can pass different narrow uh, narrow na narrow gates and other. Uh, and they should, of course, avoid obstacles in the, uh, in the workspace. And we proposed uh, the novel model for calculating the motion trajectory for self-organizing network, uh, in which we uh, implied the very well known by this audience, uh, potential, the concept of potential field, which is very popular in mobile robotics. But our inspiration, the, the key issue in this model is objective functions. Our inspiration for the formulation of our objective function uh, came from liquid crystal, uh, where the parts, the interaction between parts of, uh, in, 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 between um, molecules in parts uh, are, um, um, are modeled using Leonard Jones potential. potential. And we uh, proposed the simple function, uh, which uh, has similar characteristics to this Leonard Jones potential. In this function, uh, we assume, in this model, we assume that our node should stop in a, re in a reference um, uh, dist uh, distance from to, the, to, to its goal, to the point uh, which is a goal uh, of the movement in a workspace. And uh, the um, obstacles should be avoided in a um, safe way, so with a reference distance too. And uh, we uh, implemented uh, this model um, and proposed the algorithm for calculating new positions every repetition time for each node. And this model consists of uh, four components. The objective function consists of four components. Uh, the, third, the, the, the first um, concert with uh, the neighbors in a range uh, of a given node, um, and um, the two next uh, with obstacles, um, static and mobile, and the last one with interaction with the goal, with the po point where the, uh, where, where the all nodes should, uh, sh should be sh reached by all nodes. And uh, of course, we define, if the user defines these uh, reference distances as the scaling parameters. And uh, setting adequate, especially um, uh, this uh, reference distance, uh, we can use this model to different tasks. For example, as in these figures, uh, creating the temporal, uh, um, temporal um, communication network after um, uh, this, uh, after explosion or some damages of uh, um, uh, communication infrastructure, um, monitoring, for example, pipelines on any other points in the workspace, uh, objects in a workspace, or covering the workspace by monitoring sensors. And uh, what is the characteristic to this model? We assume that uh, in this uh, system, all no, the, the all nodes uh, have um, maintained the communication to the, to the base stans, uh, station. So the network has uh, to be coherent. 
And so finally, in summarizing this model, we proposed, uh, the, uh, we defined the, um, the, the state, the vector of states, uh, concerned with the position in a workspace energy and memory, and adequately the vector of controls. But uh, let us come back to the uh, first slide when I was talking about the problems uh, we tackled uh, while designing uh, this uh, wireless sensor network. The first one is the localization of nodes, calculating, calculating the geographical coordinates of nodes with unknown position. Why don't we um, equip the uh, wireless nodes, uh, with sensing nodes with GPS. The sensing nodes should be um, very cheap, uh, should be energy, um, should uh, consume very little energy because uh, the lifetime of a network depends on the resources and um, should be not very heavy because uh, very often these uh, nodes are deployed, randomly deployed, and the number of nodes is very big, hundreds, sometimes thousands of devices. So uh, it is uh, rather mm, impossible to equip all nodes with GPS, and additionally GPS has a lot of, uh, give the position with quite big uh, error. So, uh, the, we, we, we need uh, more uh, accurate localization. Uh, but in and, uh, the localization is very important because in the case of most applications, we have to know when we have a measurement, we have to know from which part of the workspace the measurement is. And the second problem is that when uh, typical, um, as I have told, the typical communication in a wireless sensor uh, networks is multipath communication. So we have to uh, decide about the routing algorithm, how we will send this message. And this routing algorithm depends usually on the position of nodes. Uh, and in the literature, we can find a lot of uh, different techniques uh, for uh, calculating the uh, location of nodes. Uh, in general, in the case of self-organized uh, uh, systems, uh, this uh, in, uh, ba basing or based on the wireless communications, uh, they are divided into two main groups, range-based uh, communication techniques and range-free. In the case of range-free communication techniques, we usually, uh, the difference is, is how we calculate the internode distances. In the case of uh, range-free communication techniques, we calculate the distance in hopes. We simply uh, count the hopes of a message uh, from, the, uh, from the sending node to the, to the receiver, and we try to calculate the average length of uh, um, one skip, one hope. In case of uh, uh, range-based um, localization techniques, which are more complicated, but usually more accurate, we have to calculate the Euclidean distance between each part of nodes. And the, we have only uh, the information about uh, um, simple measurement. First of all, signal, uh, how uh, strong is the signal, or sometimes we can use when we have additional equipment, for example, uh, the measurements of the angle of the uh, arrival signal or the time of arrival, the signal and others. And uh, these uh, range-based techniques are divided into two groups. Uh, the techniques which can be used for the small networks where all um, nodes are uh, in their um, transmission range and if, uh, um, techniques uh, devoted to the large systems where uh, we have to use more complicated approaches, for example, uh, Kalman filter, uh, multidimensional scaling, and different variants of optimization. We formulate linear, non-linear, convex, not convex, uh, and can use convex, not convex solvers. And uh, in the case of the small networks, the uh, well-known uh, popular techniques are triangulation and trilateration. And uh, usually in, this, uh, in, in the case of uh, localization of self 
uh, organized system, self-organized networks uh, comprised of many devices, uh, we need uh, such uh, po points which are vacant on ARCO for us. Uh, so uh, we assume that uh, in such network we have a small set, a small set of devices, which, for example, are equipped with GPS module or other um, or other information uh, that we know their position. And these nodes are anchor nodes for our system, and the other nodes in unknown position calculate their position based on this information. The calculation of the um, uh, geographical position is divided into two phases. The first one, as I have told, is a calculation of uh, internal distances. The second one is the calculation of the uh, position, the geographical coordinates, based on the information about these distances. And here we have uh, some um, uh, pie papers with which uh, some where authors propose different solutions of these problems. The, uh, on the uh, right side, uh, on the left side, we have uh, range free uh, methods, and uh, we have an illustration how we calculate the internal distances based on these hopes, uh, and uh, of course, anchor nodes too. And on the right side, we have a, a presentation of uh, some methods which uh, are used to calculate positions in, uh, in uh, this method. In this method, we use Euclidean distances calculated based on the uh, um, received uh, signal strength indicator. It is the most popular approach. And uh, you see the formula for the internode distance derived from this uh, wireless channel model. And uh, we propose in our research uh, the novel method, uh, which we call the hybrid and two-stage method, uh, in which uh, we uh, divide the localization process into two phases. Uh, and the first phase, uh, in the first phase, we use simple trilateration to um, calculate the position of as much as, po as, much as possible nodes, uh, because you know that in the case of triangular trilateration uh, and uh, two-dimension space, we need at least uh, three nodes with node position in the, our surround to calculate our position. And after repeating the first phase, uh, we have to calculate uh, the um, uh, coordinates, the geogra geographical coordinates on other nodes, which we couldn't uh, lo localize, uh, and uh, we formulated the optimization problem. Uh, in general, the objective function is an error between, uh, uh, is the difference between the uh, distance, the, between the distance calculated based on the uh, coordinates which are proposed by the optimization solver and the distance measured based on the signal strength. And uh, we proposed uh, two techniques to solve this problem, a genetic algorithm and simulated annealing. It, and it was interesting for me that the simulated annealing was very efficient, a very good technique for this uh, for this uh, um, formulation of the problem. Probably this simulation, this, this objective function is similar uh, to the objective function which we formulate in a sales um, man problem. Uh, and um, the, it was the first problem uh, to um, uh, which the uh, simulated annealing optimization problem were used and it was effective. And additionally, in the localization of system, when we have disruption of the signal, uh, very often uh, the problem of a flip ambiguity uh, appeared. It is caused, of course, by this um, uh, disruption of the signal and uh, the error in um, the measurement of the signals. And very often we obtain the solution, the position, which is a simply ref mirror reflection of the um, uh, of, the, of the true position. Uh, we propose some correlation techniques, some um, uh, correction techniques uh, to mitigate this problem because this problem seriously influenced the result. And we, our, our, our correction was uh, very efficient and we obtained 
quite good result. You see the results, the selected results of our simulations. Uh, in this experiment, we had uh, 200 nodes, and uh, the 10% uh, of anchor nodes. And um, as you see from this diagram, the uh, techniques uh, our, our solution, our algorithm uh, is uh, really promising, give quite good results, even in a situation when the anchor nodes are not evenly distributed in the workspace. It is a key issue, uh, evenly distributed of anchor nodes. Uh, but of course, in this simulation, we assumed that the mm, uh, measurement, uh, signal measurement error uh, is about 10%. It is very optimistic, but we um, t took into, took into uh, take, uh, we assumed such uh, value of this error because in general, in all publications, all researchers assumed that it will be 10%. Uh, we know uh, that uh, the simulation is a very useful tool for uh, testing the prototypes of our solution, but only the implementation in testbed or if we can in real application, uh, and the testbed with real uh, devices uh, in a, a real environment uh, give, uh, gives us uh, um, information really uh, about the um, advantages and disadvantages of our solution, their weakness and strength. And we decided to uh, try uh, to test our algorithm in a Mm, real environment with uh, real devices. Uh, mm, the devices couldn't be um, put on the ground because the modules, radio modules in these uh, small sensors are, you know, very cheap and uh, they are not very good uh, quality. So the communication was hopeless uh, when the devices were just on the ground. And we uh, put uh, the, these devices uh, on the about a half of meter on the ground, and uh, we tested uh, our algorithm. Uh, we used uh, 9, uh, 49 sensors, seven anchor nodes. And as you see, we obtained quite good results. Of course, they are much worse than in simulation. Uh, because the error is much bigger, but the error was the average error of localization, lo localization error was about less than uh, 80 centimeters. And the, in the upper part of the slide, you see the table um, uh, with the results of uh, the simple localization system using three laceration and eight older uh, devices, crossbow devices. Uh, we performed some experiments uh, inside the building. Uh, in our uh, main auditorium at our university, uh, it was, uh, the conditions were very difficult for wireless communication because of the stone floor, uh, because of uh, uh, satellite dishes close, on, on the roofs close, uh, of, of buildings close to our, uh, our university, and students using wireless uh, internet inside the building. Uh, the results are not very good, as you see. Uh, the error, measurement error of the signal was very big, but nevertheless, we see that the solution, the, the approaches based on range-based uh, methods uh, give better results than these uh, range-free techniques. And let us switch to another problem concerned with energy management. The major energy consumer in the case of wireless sensor networks are, of course, processor, but we can't switch rather processor because uh, the, work the, the node doesn't, the device doesn't work um, without uh, CPU. Uh, the sensor circuit, which, can, which we can control, but usually sensors should be active all the time, and radio uh, transceiver, which can be controlled. Because usually uh, the network nodes uh, are um, redundant, and networks with redundant nodes, where then from time to time we can switch off some devices. But uh, coming to the beginning, we uh, have the seven, the five, five um, main modes of uh, radio transceiver operation. Uh, deep sleep with uh, voltage regulator switched off, 
Uh, in this uh, mode, uh, we use very, very little energy, but of course, we have a problem with um, uh, working w with, with switching off of the device because it, um, it takes a lot of time. Uh, the sleep mode with a uh, voltage regulator on uh, and uh, the uh, consumption of energy is bigger, but uh, of course the time um, when we want to wake up the, uh, the node is shorter. And idle mode with very short time for switching for activation of our node. And two modes which in which uh, our node is active receive in which it is interesting that in the receive mode, in many um, uh, modules of different vendors, we need the most, uh, the, the, biggest assume, uh, um, the biggest amount of energy in this mode. And transmission mode, uh, transmit mode, uh, which uh, can be modeled, because we can, um, usually vendors offer different um, uh, variants of transmission, uh, and uh, which consider different, in which we have different usage of energy and different uh, range of uh, the transmission. So we can change topology uh, controlling this uh, transmission um, for different transmission modes. And in general literature, uh, the um, uh, scientists proposed uh, three types of energy aware techniques. The first one is called topology control, and uh, Mr. Akilit and Burand in their book um, defined um, con to, to, to this as a topology control versus uh, assume uh, four uh, techniques. Uh, deployment, which of course, deployment of sensors, which of course defined our topology. Clustering of sensors. Uh, power control, it means uh, control of uh, uh, energy used for transmission and activity control. And uh, for those who remember um, the um, uh, ISO, um, ISO OC uh, reference communication uh, model, uh, consisting of se seven layers uh, with different protocols, this topology control layer um, is located between data link layer and network layer. Data link layer contains the media active uh, access protocols, uh, access control for protocols, MAC protocols, and the network layer. In network layers, we have routing protocols. This topology control influences both routing and MAC protocols. And the two other techniques uh, are, of course, a media, um, uh, energy efficient media access control protocols and routing. We have focused on, uh, we have focused, oh sorry, we have focused on these uh, two, uh, power control and active control. And uh, uh, let's have, uh, le let us look uh, to the power control algorithms. From the cosinus theorem, uh, we can derive that the uh, shorter transmission, the short transmission is less costly uh, in the case of energy usage. So uh, many researchers propose different techniques for um, activity uh, for power control. And uh, these techniques uh, differ in different uh, information used by the nodes which use uh, these techniques. And we tested various of them uh, and we proposed some modification. You see the results of the simulation on the first uh, three figures. And we can observe, we can see that uh, different algorithms give, give us different topologies. And of course, different energy saving. Uh, we performed some tests in a real space with real devices in the middle. And uh, what we observed, of course, the, the shortcomings of these techniques. Uh, the problem with quality of service. Our devices are small, with a small memory, small buffer. So if we have shorter communication links, we have more, com more messages to send. So probably we overflow the buffers. Of course, simulation doesn't um, demonstrate such effect. And uh, activity control techniques is a simple technique in which we assume that from time to time we can switch off uh, some modules, some nodes, and only, for example, a part of nodes is active. 
It is enough to maintain the communication in the network. Again, we have different proposition of different authors. We tested a lot of them, uh, and uh, we uh, tested uh, these uh, algorithms in a uh, simulator, and uh, of course in our test bed, and uh, proposed some modification, and as you see, uh, really the activity control techniques allow us to decrease the energy consumption. Usually the techniques uh, are based on the different um, models of um, clusterization, of network clusterization, and usually we assume that at a given time, only one node in this cluster operates. Exactly. And finally, we propose another approach to energy management. We formulated uh, the um, mixed integer programming um, optimization problem, uh, and we uh, were looking for the best energy states in our network. And we considered two approaches, the first one where we calculated and tried to minimize the total energy consumed by the whole network, and the second formulation in which we try to enforce the node to use the similar energy in a given time because uh, such approach uh, allows us to extend the lifetime of the whole network. As you see, we obtained the results with, uh, which allowed us to reduce the uh, time, the, the, the energy consumption. The, we had the problem with the first, uh, pro with the first um, formulation. I didn't write here a lot of constraints because these uh, tasks are quite complicated because of different constraints um, mainly connected with um, the wireless communication limitations. And we couldn't uh, solve the problem on our computer with the number of nodes bigger than 20. And uh, finally, we propose a computing, computing and ner networking architecture using uh, very popular now edge, for edge computing, fog computing, and cloud computing, where our sensor nodes uh, and sensor, uh, wireless sensor uh, system uh, is a level of edge computing when sensors are responsible for data collecting, aggregation, um, correlation, and so on. And next we have the level of fog computing, which uh, is composed by the base stations, which collect data from different wireless sensor networks and perform the simple uh, calculations. And finally, through the backbone network, the data are sent to the cloud computing where, uh, or data centers when data are um, uh, processed and we make the decision, the final decision. And uh, finally, I would like to present the results of the application. Unfortunately, it is only simulation, or maybe fortunately, because we took into account the heavy gas clouds, phenomena clouds. And uh, we uh, were looking for the system. We de designed the system for monitoring, for detecting and monitoring this cloud. We focused on the detecting of the uh, boundary of the cloud and tracking this boundary. And uh, we proposed the algorithm in which we used our um, uh, model with this potential function for um, mobile, uh, for, for motion trajectory planning. We mm, assumed that we have a set of devices, mo mobile devices, uh, which uh, we divided into several clusters. We set, we defined the head for each cluster, the head node and the head for the whole uh, wireless sensor network. And we maintained that, we, the, we assumed that the communication between the um, uh, heads of all clusters should be maintained, and uh, the head of cluster should be uh, in a constant communication link with the uh, center of the, uh, with the, the, the head of the whole system. And uh, we proposed the following potential function in our algorithm, calculating the new position, for calculating the new positions of the uh, nodes in time. And uh, this uh, objective function consists of three components. The first one is, um, is defined by the, it is an interaction with the central 
point, point of the cloud, of course calculated based on the currently available information from the sensors which detected the cloud and are inside the cloud. And uh, the second, uh, and the goal is of course to push the um, uh, nodes, uh, the sensing devices to the border of this cloud. And uh, the second, uh, second uh, part of the objective function is concerned with the uh, um, location of the devices just uh, as wide as possible on the to, um, to uh, cover the border as far as, pos as much as possible, taking into account that the um, communication between the, uh, between the devices in a cluster should be maintained. And the last part, last component, is uh, concerned with the uh, concept that the clusters should be evenly distributed on the border. So we calculate the angles between the clusters and we try to uh, move uh, these, uh, these devices uh, and push them to be evenly distributed. You see the simple example from the simulator when the group of uh, devices is looking in search for the cloud and uh, when they found the cloud, they try to, um, to find the border, to detect the border, and uh, next step will be the tracking of the border. So, of course, they are moving, uh, and uh, they maintain the communication in the whole system. And uh, we, the next step is after boundary detection, is a boundary, uh, boundary tra uh, tracking. So we assume that usually we don't have enough uh, devices that we can evenly distribute them on the border. So the devices which detect the border, which will, be, uh, which will cover the border, will be moving over time. We assume that the cloud can expand, of course, and uh, they track the border. So they move around the border. We formulated um, several quality measures uh, b which were used uh, for um, uh, assessing the eff 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 effectiveness of our algorithm. The measure concerned with the uh, um, center of the cloud, we um, assume that we want uh, to cover, um, we want to be as close to the border as possible, so move of, m we move a um, cluster towards the boundary and if this measure, this distance is bigger, it is better for us. The second uh, quality measure concerned with the location of, uh, deploy, uh, of deployment clusters on the border. As I have told, we are interested to deploy them in ev evenly. And the last uh, quality measure concerned with the deployment of nodes in each cluster we want to cover the border as much as possible, so the bigger this value, we have a better topology. And uh, finally, we perform experiments with a real, a very good uh, simulator of, um, for the phen phenomena cloud, and for, um, we take an account into account the instantaneous release of a vapor of a liquid is natural gas. We assume that we have 16 uh, sensors, and uh, moving, of course. And we divided the sensors into four, um, into four clusters. And uh, you can see the snapshots of the result at some um, time, um, sometimes. And you see that uh, the, uh, our system tried to cover, uh, to cover the border as much as possible. And um, as um, uh, Mr. Chairman told, we summarized our research in a book, uh, which was published uh, in, the, the, in December um, uh, 2022. Uh, and uh, I didn't um, talk about the very um, hot uh, topic now, security of the wireless sensor networks. Uh, we switch now our research to this problem because as you know, uh, in the uh, current world, uh, a lot of um, threats, we observe a lot of threats in the internet, 
and very often small devices are used as a botnet. So uh, on the other hand, a lot of sensing devices are, installed, uh, are components of our uh, industrial uh, networks. So um, we uh, got a project uh, from, uh, an, uh, which is funded by our um, national um, uh, NCBR, and uh, this project, the goal of this project is to secure the industry networks in a mine, in a coal mine. And uh, our goal is to develop uh, the new, new tools for detecting threats uh, for these networks and uh, threats on IT networks and OT networks. And uh, we plan and we are currently working uh, in this project. We are, we are conducting uh, this project and uh, we um, uh, in imply uh, to develop these devices, uh, artificial intelligence methods, uh, mainly uh, simple um, machine learning techniques and deep learning. Uh, the other goal of this project is to develop, just for simulation, uh, the um, possible attacks, threats, uh, uh, cyber attacks on the installation using uh, in, in neural networks. Uh, so uh, this is a challenge for us now because uh, this project is uh, very short. As you see, it is conducted by uh, three uh, in a consortium by three, uh, three institutions. The leader is the um, Jastrzemska Spółka Węglowa IT Systems Group and uh, we have Warsaw University of Technology, uh, our institute and Institute for Te Telecommunication and Central Mining Institute. The challenge is that this project is uh, the technology in the very high level, in uh, level nine, it means that we have to implement this technology in the selected coal mine. So we hope that we will <laughs> Uh, be able to, uh, to, to implement when, when our solution will be useful and will be used uh, by miners. Uh, so it is all what I would, uh, uh, I would um, uh, end and uh, thank you very much for your attention, even this morning uh, time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eva. Thank you for this uh, extremely interesting and full of uh, talk, uh, full of uh, many ideas. Uh, we must stick to our schedule, but I think uh, that uh, we have some time for questions. So, if you have uh, one, so please ask them. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for a very interesting and very well uh, prepared uh, presentation, of course. Uh, my question tackles uh, the problem of industrial applications. So, uh, at the end of your presentation, you talk uh, some words about it. Uh, um, I can say so, from the industrial application point of view, uh, the application can be divided into two, two um, parts. First, uh, so-called safety and not non-safety. Non-safety, uh, it means explosive zones. Um, a lot of Polish industry and, and, and a whole all the world uh, are uh, working in explosive, uh, of course, uh, areas and uh, zones. And uh, for example, the chemical, uh, chemical industry, even food industry, pharmaceutical and the industry, and a lot of. And uh, from my point of view, uh, the application of uh, wireless networks is uh, unfortunately very restrictive and very low in these uh, areas. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, what's your opinion, how the wireless networks can be used further and more in uh, such uh, areas? I know that uh, there is a problem, of course, is why communication, with which quality is not very good. But as I know, for example, in these coal mines, they use uh, wireless communication, uh, even inside, but with a lot of uh, stations, uh, with uh, a lot of uh, radio uh, modules, um, which are uh, densely uh, distributed. Uh, and uh, there was, for example, uh, the um, project, as I remember when, uh, when I was talking with uh, 
uh, director of Comac uh, Institute from Gliwice, uh, that uh, they tried to develop the uh, wireless system, communication system, uh, to, for miners. Uh, to, um, for safety, of course, their safety, because uh, Polish um, uh, coal, uh, sev- uh, especially these uh, uh, mine, uh, mines uh, which are uh, under, um, in the capital group, Jastrzemska Spółka Węglowa, uh, are very dangerous uh, cause because of methane and explosion. But uh, the miners didn't want because uh, we know, and it is a problem of this IoT, and especially the sensor networks, that uh, we don't like to be monitored all the time. And this agenda danger, similar to these artificial intelligence uh, techniques, that uh, the monitoring uh, can influence our life. And the miners didn't want. But after this dangerous situation last year, uh, the explosions, they change the mining. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, I think that um, we will have a problem with the level of this, uh, with the quality of wireless communication, because it is very sensitive to, uh, to, to the surrounding, to environment, to weather condition, and so on. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, in the case of uh, these wireless sensor networks, uh, which I was talking about, uh, we usually assume the simple devices, cheap devices. So I think that uh, I see the main, um, the main application of them uh, to f- for, for monitoring the open space and uh, disaster uh, management uh, after explosion of plants or something like that. It is much uh, bigger problem inside the building and inside the um, communication, the installation, uh, industry installation. But I hope, uh, I see the differences in uh, the equipment. Uh, Hardware and software is uh, better and better quality. So maybe, because uh, maybe we will be able to develop a better um, radio models, uh, uh, which, which will be less sensitive uh, to, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, disturbances uh, of the signal. The other problem is security, because a uh, wireless network is uh, more sensitive to the attacks, of course. So uh, this security uh, component is so important. Uh, so I think that we need uh, better quality hardware and software uh, to apply this system just in industry, uh, justice industry installations. Uh, now, it's, uh, we, we see we, it, 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 this experiment uh, with the testbed network. So there are so many shortcomings of these technologies. Uh, and uh, of course, the reason is low quality level of uh, wireless communication. Thank you very much. I wanted to myself uh, ask some questions, but I think that such, such questions must be postponed uh, to a better time because uh, regular sessions are about to start. So let's applaud our speaker once again. <laughs> Thank you very much. And so I will complete our plenary session. Thank uh, you very Mr. Much. Chairman, I would like to, to post an announcement. Uh, today we have a trip to... Um,